So we often hear parents complain about how their Gen Z kids are becoming increasingly progressive, increasingly woke and left-wing due to the influence of social media and the liberal education pipeline. So a recent headline caught my attention because it was about the opposite of that frustration. A father was complaining because his beloved son had gone MAGA. Dun, dun, dun. I just want to take you guys through this article because it is quite a doozy. The headline reads, my son was struggling and then he fell for Trump's toxic brand of masculinity. I'm heartbroken. Just get ready. Before we dive in though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the comment section channel if you have not already, and of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss one of our episodes. Now, just a little disclaimer, obviously, Every parent has the right to raise their kids however they want to. You can raise them with values that are different than mine. You can raise them with values that are similar to mine. It's totally fine. And obviously parents everywhere, no matter your background or your creed, will be sad if their kids grow up to not keep the values that they instilled in them. But the rationality for this father's heartbreak and turmoil is just so funny and is so out of this world that we have to discuss. Because it's not even about politics. It's about his assumptions of what his son now believes. So the article starts off strong, or should I say weak, just the way the father wants it. He writes, I didn't get a call from my son on Father's Day this year. Our political disagreements have made things hard. I'm a 59-year-old progressive and special education teacher, and I'm voting for Kamala Harris in November. Well, that explains it. Nick is 21, and he would say that he holds traditional conservative values, but he's conflating those values with radical MAGA ideas, which correlate the right with patriotism, manhood, intelligence, independence, and honesty. Bruh. I understand where my son's vulnerabilities came from and why this right-wing posturing was able to seep into him. I understand it but I still regret it. Oh no, manhood, intelligence, independence, and honesty, you can't have that for your children? Definitely not, sir. I mean, already guys, we are one paragraph in and it is comical. Now the father then goes on to describe how his son grew up on the autism spectrum and how he had a hard time fitting in and making friends. He wrote, Nick never really found a person that he could really link or vibe with. He loves animals though. We let him get a dog when he was young and that allowed him to be more than a follower. He was all about serving the dog's interest. I've seen Nick's heart melt. He can't tolerate cruelty to animals or people who are vulnerable, which feels ironic giving his politics now. I mean, like, what is that even supposed to mean? Like, is he attempting to insinuate that all right-leaning people are just mean and soulless and couldn't even care for dogs? I mean, like, funnily enough, I actually see more contemporary right-wing people doing genuinely good thing for animals, whether it be dogs or livestock, than people on the left. I mean, one party is trying to regulate and tax regenerative farming into oblivion. The other isn't. Like, no wonder Good Rancher sponsors mostly right-wing shows because they know that we are the ones who are actually in support of the farmers who supply all of their meat. And if you didn't know, now you do, but Good Rancher's meat is all bred, raised, and processed right here in the United States. And not to mention, all of their products are sourced exclusively from local family farms without any antibiotics or hormones. They're pre-trimmed and individually packed. So truly, Good Ranchers makes it easy to eat healthier and live happier. Now, if you guys have been watching the show for a while, you know that I seriously love Good Ranchers and I love them so much that I just teamed up with them to curate my own personal box filled with all my favorite cuts. You can get the box now at goodranchers.com slash dailywire. This is literally what Alex and I eat throughout the week. We use it for all of our meal preps. We use it for all of our dinners. If you want to know what Brett Cooper eats, it is in this box. And you can get my box today by going to goodranchers.com slash dailywire. You'll see my box and that is how you can click it. Guys, there is literally everything in there. I gave you a little assortment because I get bored eating one thing. I'm sure you guys too. So everything is in there. Plus, Good Ranchers is also offering an incredible deal right now for a limited time. Right now, you can subscribe to any box and you will get a free add-on for one year. That is a full year of free chicken, ground beef, applewood bacon, or wild-caught salmon with every order. My own curated box doesn't have salmon in it. So if you really want to get a full platter of variety, I would recommend adding that on because it is delicious. Plus, with my exclusive code COOPER, you will also get $25 off your first box and free express shipping. That is up to $400 in savings. And by the way, guys, Knowles and I both have a box and we're in a little competition right now. So if you guys buy my box and I win, that means I get the golden trophy. So I need you guys to make that happen. I got to show Knowles who's boss. So get my curated Good Ranchers box today at goodranchers.com slash daily wire. Remember to use code COOPER to claim $25 off your first box, free express shipping, and your your free add-on for a year. Again, guys, goodranchers.com slash daily wire and use promo code Cooper. One party's president has untrained dogs that bite people right and left, and the other has a good boy who is so well-behaved that he can even come on the campaign trail. Yes, I'm talking about you, J.D. Vance. I love your dog. And also, I have three dogs. They're all doing fine. I love them. I literally feed them more expensive food than I feed myself, and I'm voting for Trump. So pack it up. Let's continue. 
He goes on and he writes, some of the older guys at school who Nick is trying to emulate were really into building computers and hacking in the dark web. He got online as a teen and joined some far right message boards. And I think that's where he got massaged into these right wing positions. He started echoing those points and then he got praise from whatever knuckleheads posted that crap. It became a spiral. Nick was kind of lost, but on the internet, he was able to be a different person, to have more confidence and show off how bright he is. We had moved to the Bay Area in 2017 after Trump won the election. Nick was 15 or 16 when he said that he liked Trump. I can understand how Trump appealed to a childish sensibility. He's this clownish figure who does whatever he wants. Okay, well, ignoring that part because that's just a low jab. Oh no, the horror. Your socially awkward son found his footing and came out of his shell. And that's apparently such a bad thing because it happens to be connected, sort of, with Donald Trump. Like at this point, I honestly care less about this young man coming to conservatism and joining the political right and liking Donald Trump. And I care more about his social development because that's actually what's important here. And I care more about the fact that his father seems to discount this increase in confidence and happiness because it represents something that he hates. His son growing up and maturing and flourishing has now been turned into a bad thing because he can't get rid of the Trump derangement syndrome. That is what we're seeing. So then he goes on and he explains how he's so shocked by his son's evolving viewpoints that he wonders if this is just a rejection of his own view, similar to the way that the author's father was a Reagan Republican and he rejected those views you know, maybe it's just a pattern. And then guys, he shares his views on what it means to be a man. Bazinga father, assuming father is still the appropriate designation. He writes, I've never been a macho kind of man. Well, you? <laughs> no way. To me, our biggest responsibility as humans is to look after each other. Men have been given places of privilege in society. So when people talk about being a man, to me, that means what do you use your privilege for? It's just wild. Like you think it's a privilege. Other men think that it is a responsibility. So they intentionally step up. You're like, oh, I guess I'm here. I'm so sorry I have this privilege. Just own up to your masculinity at this point. It would be less nauseating for all of us. Anyway, going on. I worked at a pirate radio station in Houston and we helped with emergency efforts during Tropical Storm Allison in 2001. For me, manhood is about using all of your energy to make life better for the person next to you. No, that is just what it means to be a decent, good human being. But that does not have to do with your manhood specifically. Good men should do that, but that's also not all they are. And also, men who love Trump can also care about others. In fact, most of them do. Now, clearly, since this father failed to paint the picture of masculinity for his son, these radical friends he found online showed him instead. Nick started hanging out with guys in Houston who shared his belief or had even more radical ones. And the part of the story that you might have missed because I didn't read this part is that his parents split up, the dad stayed in the Bay Area, of course, and the mom and Nick moved back to Texas. So Nick and his friends started talking about what makes a man. They said men have to be strong. So Nick bought a bike and rides it around every day. That's a healthy habit. But they also say things like men smoke. So now he does that too. That's the one part of this article that I disagree with because you don't have to smoke to be a man. That's just dumb. But moving on, they introduced Nick to guns. Oh no. And they started taking him to the shooting range. Oh no, he's becoming well-educated and knows gun safety. On his 21st birthday, his mother and I sent him money thinking that he would spend it on a computer or something. But he went out and bought a gun. He didn't tell either of us because he knows how we feel about them. One of his right-wing friends is very wealthy. It's nice to have a friend who takes you out to dinner, but it also means that Nick hears all this stuff about how people who aren't rich are basically parasites. And he doesn't want to listen to me or his mom because I've been a teacher my whole life and we always seem to buy. So he thinks that we're lazy, stupid hippies. Why would he listen to anything we say when his friend's parents have a Mercedes in the driveway and live in a million dollar house? Well, at this point, it all just sounds like jealousy and projection. Please honor me for my courage. But we're getting to the best part because throughout this entire article, the father is continuously painting his son as some kind of radical, racist, alt-right, red pill bro. He just lives in these online chat rooms. Is he an incel? Do whatever. But then he shares this info. Nick has a girlfriend now who he met online in one of his right-wing forums. My ex says that she is a perfectly lovely girl and isn't some sort of Marjorie Taylor Greene type, just a country Catholic kid. She's also Latina. Oh, good job, son. The father's very happy. He gets one little intersectional point. She's also Latina. So his feelings on immigration have softened after he spent time with her family. He's got something at stake now. Oh, so she's Latina. So he's not actually racist. Her family are immigrants and he still loves them and cares about them. Got it. Guess what? Most Republican people would agree with all of that. Why do you think there are so many Mexican conservatives? I mean, get it through your brain. But back to your son. He's happy, he's healthy, he's confident, he's well-adjusted, he's in a good relationship. Wow, imagine that. I mean, guys, like, let's quickly recap. This father has said 
that since his son met a friend online with more right-wing views, he has become more sociable, less shy. He developed confidence in sharing his opinions. He made many friends. He got into health and fitness. He started exercising daily. He met a girl who he is now happily dating, and he spends time with a wealthy family who, if I were a betting gal, probably works really hard and have become role models to Nick. All the while, his father got a divorce from his mom in 2020 and now lives across the country from his own son, sitting in his chair, writing about Trump and complaining about guns. Which do you think is the most powerful influence? I mean, this man is so concerned over his lack of influence over his own son, and yet he lives thousands of miles away from him. I mean, if you cared that much about the future of your son's life and the stake of his soul, couldn't you move closer to him to fix that? Or do you actually not care that much? You don't want to step foot in Texas because it's not like San Francisco. I mean, listen, buddy, the fact of the matter is this young man is going to find a masculine influence and role model from somewhere, even if it's not you. And what is so laughable and yet sadly predictable is that any severe criticism of his son was not based on anything that the son had actually explicitly done or said, but things that his father thinks he believes because he is now MAGA, which is just so on brand for that idea. It's not actually what we do. It's what they think we think because of things that they have indoctrinated themselves to believe. It's like this weird, endless cycle. Somebody commented and said, heartbroken, his son hasn't turned into some crazy ass leftist is one hell of a take. Somebody else said, this usually happens in total reverse. MAGA, right wing, etc., is now the counterculture. Yeah, many kids are catching on to the idea that favoring the ruling political party and the ideology that literally every single major corporation and organization parrots is not rebellious. It's actually conformity. You're all conforming. You're not the rebellion. Somebody else commented and said, I wonder if he would be less distressed if his son up and decided to be a girl. Literally, like he probably would be because then he would have, you know, a token trans son and an accessory to prove that he was a good father, that he's so inclusive, that he's so, so wonderful. It's all to make him feel good. His son transitioning would be a form of virtue signaling for the father. Instead, by sitting down and writing this article and airing out his family's dirty laundry, he's trying to prove to the world that he is a heartbroken father and he can't believe that this happened. Probably wanting some progressive brownie points to make up for the fact that his son doesn't have blue hair and that is a stain on his reputation. And again, if you care so much about your son and mending the relationship that you have with him, maybe don't put him on blast for the entire world to see. Maybe try to understand what he actually believes. Even though I know that's very hard for you to comprehend. Well guys, I hope you liked this episode. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. See you guys next time.